There are many reasons your display might not be working. Maybe you dropped it and it's cracked, or after the fall, cables inside are not attached correctly. Whatever the reason, you've come to the right place, because today I'm gonna show you how to replace the display in your 2015 MacBook. Hi, I'm Gwendolyn with iFixit, and for this repair you're going to need a battery isolation pick, P5 pentalobe screwdriver, spudger, T5 Torx screwdriver, TriPoint Y00 screwdriver, and tweezers. I have all the tools I need and I also have my magnetic mat. It's not listed as one of the required tools, but I never do a repair without it. It helps me stay organized and keeps me from losing any important parts. Today, I'm working on an early 2015 version of the Retina MacBook. While some of the steps are very similar to other versions of the MacBooks, always follow the step-by-step -step guide for your specific machine. Not only does the guide walk you through the complete repair, but you can also see comments and notes from other users who have followed it to help you when you do your repair. You can find all our guides at ifixit.com. Let's get started. First things first, make sure your computer is completely turned off and disconnected from any power source. Then flip your MacBook over and tackle the back panel. To do that, we're going to unscrew the pentalobe screws holding it in place. There are eight screws total, but keep in mind there are three different sizes, so make note of that on your magnetic mat when you take them out. Now you can pull up on the lower case with your fingers, but only about a 45 degree angle because it's still attached by that tricky trackpad ribbon cable. In order to detach that cable, you'll need to hold up the case with one hand and then use your tweezers with the other hand. Use your tweezers to peel the black tape and then you can use your spudger to carefully flip up the retaining flap on the trackpad cable zip connector. Then just disconnect the trackpad ribbon cable from the trackpad by pulling it gently through the slot in the frame. Before the next step, we just need to readjust the computer where the lower case is on the desk and the upper case is propped open. Now we can get to the T5 Torx screw connecting the battery connector to the logic board. With that out, we can disconnect the battery and we'll need the help of this new tool, the battery isolation pick. We're going to insert the pick between the logic board and the battery connector. Next up are the TriPoint and Torx screws holding the USB-C port bracket in place. The TriPoint Y00 is not a common bit. Make sure you have it before you begin the step so you don't strip your screw. If you don't have it, we do sell the driver separately in our store. Now you can use the flat end of your spudger to disconnect the USB-C port cable bracket by prying straight up from the logic board. Moving up to the audio jack board, we're going to use our spudger to flip open the retaining flap on the audio jack board cable zip connector. And then we're going to disconnect the audio jack board ribbon cable by pulling it straight back out of the zip connector. Now we can open the MacBook the rest of the way and lay the two halves down flat, being careful of the ribbon cable that still connects them. We have one cable to disconnect and that's the display cable. The retaining flap is hidden under a piece of black tape. Keep in mind, the small retaining flap may lift up with the tape. If that's the case, use the flat end of your spudger to hold down the retaining flap while peeling the tape away with the tweezers. Then you can use your spudger to flip open the retaining flap on the display cable connector. Carefully slide the flat end of the spudger underneath the display cable to separate the adhesive, holding it to the lower case. Take care not to damage the cable. If the adhesive is too strong, heat the case directly underneath the cable with an eye opener to soften the adhesive. 
and then try it again. Mine doesn't need any heat, so I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the cable and gently pull it straight out of its connector. And then I'm just gonna set the uppercase aside. Next step, we'll be tackling the audio jack board. Use a spudger to flip open the zip connector retaining flap for the dual microphone assembly ribbon cable. And then use your tweezers to pull the ribbon cable free from its connector. Once the cable is disconnected, we can remove the two T5 torque screws holding the board in place and remove it from the case. Moving on to the display, we need to first remove the two T5 Torx screws securing the display cable assembly and then move our way up to the USB-C port ribbon cable by removing the single Phillips double zero screw securing it in place. With those out and organized on our magnetic mat, we can work on the USB-C port ribbon cable. First, we're gonna unfold the ribbon cable so that we can get a clear view of the bracket, and then we're gonna remove the bracket with our tweezers so that we can disconnect the cable with our spudger and remove it from the case. Now we need to fully open the display and set the MacBook down on its right edge with the display facing away from you. Now we can remove the four T9 Torx screws securing the display hinges in place. With those off, we just need to move the hinges out of their recesses in the upper case. Holding the display assembly with one hand and the upper case with the other, push them together slightly. Then just push the upper case forward while pulling back gently on the display. You can find all the parts and tools you need for this repair and many more at ifixit.com. And let us know how it goes. You can find me on Twitter at Gwendolyn Gay and follow iFixit at iFixit. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date on all our latest teardowns and repair videos. And give us a like on Facebook at facebook.com slash iFixit.